So as many of you know, I'm a pretty big fan of Terrifier. So when I heard that Damien Leone was making a horror Christmas movie, I was pretty excited. Who doesn't love a good holiday horror movie? Oh good! I love a chase! So this is a breakdown of the new teaser trailer found only in theaters for Terrifier 3. So what do we know? We know the next one is going to pick up right where the last one left off. We know the opening of 3 is going to be incredibly bloody. A studio would never let me film what I plan on filming. So mark my words, I guarantee you the first 5 minutes of this movie is going to be very controversial. And we know the original ending was supposed to be very different. Samantha Scafidi said she was originally supposed to be in a chokehold by one Chris Jericho. One of the highlights of filming was he basically him putting me in a chokehold. So never, that never made the light of day and it never made the film. But he was like, are you okay? How are we doing? And I was like, I am so happy right now. My childhood dream just put me in a chokehold. And Damien Leone said art was supposed to pop out of the back of Victoria's head, but that idea was tossed out and reshot when Malignant came out and had the same ending. So, will the teaser show us what happens to Victoria and art? Let's find out. Hey guys, so I'm at the theater, I've got my poster, I've got my magnum condoms, I'm ready to plow, let's go! I gotta tell you, I was sitting there, and there was these two, three girls, who were probably no old, older than but maybe 12 or 13, and they were with their mom, and I would just kind of casually just look over, and I'm expecting them to have like their mouth on the floor, but like, nothing. They are just immune to all of it. It just goes straight over their head. I'm like, wow. I still kind of get a little gaggy when I watch that bedroom scene, but it was it was crazy. So Damien Leone comes out on the screen and he's like, hey everybody, thanks for, you know, joining me on this uh, little journey. And I gotta say, I love when directors and actors do this. It just adds a little bit of extra something, you know, it makes you feel like, you know, paying $16 to go to the theater you get a little something more. It's a nice little sweetener. Um, we also got a couple of pretty badass trailers for things that are coming out from Bloody Disgusting and, and studios of that nature here. And uh, yeah, let's waste no more time. You came here for a recap and analysis. Let's get into it right now. So the trailer begins the sound of Silent Night as a carousel rotates. We see a vanity table for a little girl decked out in princess, bears, and what might be a wizard, it's kind of hard to say, but it all seems pretty standard. Nothing here that screams easter eggs, other than a lot of bears that I don't know why, <laughs> probably coincidental. The snow is coming down hard outside the window, and we see a little girl who is asleep in her bed. However, she hears music. She hears a noise. Is somebody on the roof? Is it Santa Claus? From there, she creeps down the stairs with her teddy bear, sees a shadow move past the living room. She's afraid, but she goes to investigate. Santa Claus is there. He's leaving gifts. The little girl approaches with caution. Is it him? Is it Art the Clown? Is it somebody else? She approaches slowly. I mean, he's an awfully skinny Santa, but, you know. And it's with that that she yells out, SANTA! And Santa raises his head, but as you probably guessed, it's not Santa, it's Art the Clown. And unlike the poster, he's wearing like one of those cheap, ugly wigs in the whole outfit. And it's just, it's great. I, I'm a little torn because the version of the poster is so damn cool. But again, despite it all, this movie does have a lot of comedy to it. They all do, if you really think about it, despite all the body gore and... And all of a sudden he picks up an axe and starts laughing maniacally and the theme song for Terrifier just kicks in and you know it's gonna be a bad time. He slowly looks back at the little girl and you know it's up. She is done. With that we get a title card. It's a wreath. Damien Leone's Terrifier 3. And there's three skulls and down the middle there's a little horn which is of course Art the Clown's classic uh, go-to thing from part two. He also had an All Hallows Eve. That's his thing, the horn. He just likes annoying the hell out of people with it. We cut back and Art the Clown has clearly killed the little girl. The axe is now next to the tree by the fireplace. It's covered in blood. In the top left corner behind the chair, he has written his name as he always does as his calling card. And now he's sitting there eating cookies and milk, trying to dunk it into the cup before finally looking at the audience, laughing, and giving us a little toast, as if to say, I'll see you next year. And that's it. Now, I know some people mentioned that there was a quick flash in the very end of the trailer, and people thought, okay, what is this, like an Easter egg? It's not. I, I got a copy of this uh, trailer online. I somebody posted it, of course. It's been taken down now, 
That's why I'm using stills. I don't want to get uh, jammed up. And honestly, I think people should see it legitimately. But then again, this might be a loss to time. We have no idea if this is ever going to be on the DVD or if it's going to be just lost and never seen again. I, I'm, I'm glad that I got it before they yanked it off of YouTube. But it looks really cool. So like I said, the style with the pink and the blues and the whites, it really does remind me of the movie Krampus, the snow globe. You know, you know it's going to be a family drama. And the creatures. Take a look at some of the creatures in Krampus. Look at that. And now think of the creatures that you know from the nice circle. You know, there's a lot of parallels. They look similar. And I love it because I love Krampus and I love All Hallows Eve slash the Ninth Circle. The devil, you know, that surrealism, Art the Clown. It's just, it's good stuff. I like the tone and direction that they're taking this in. Damien has said in the past that in the future he wants to bring back some of the origin characters. He wants to go back to the roots. And I think that we're going to get some of these characters. I think it's going to parallel. I think Art is going to bring the party with him. So that's really exciting if that is the way they go, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, obviously, this is a direct parody or reference to How the Grinch Stole Christmas, which has been parodied many, many times. The little girl, fake Santa Claus, pat on the head, you get the idea. They've Hell, David Howard Thurn even played the Grinch in the mean one which was really bad and had really bad PlayStation 1 special effects. I mean, look at that CGI. It's just rough. But I could totally see this being a conversation between Damien and David about how he played the character and how they can improve upon it. I think everybody was let down by the mean one, and this might be another bite at the apple. I know in the past, Damien has been quoted as saying that Lauren Levera and David Howard Thornton should in fact play their characters as if they were Batman and the Joker. If you've ever seen The Long Halloween, or better yet, read it, you know that's really not uncommon for Joker to dress up like the Joker and wreck havoc. He does it in the comics, he does it in the animated series, He's kind of done it a lot if you actually stop to think about it. So I'm very curious to see if that's going to be a thread they continue to pull on, because why not? And, the Joker got away. In a recent interview asking what was the inspiration directly, Damien Leone said, One of my favorite horror films of all time was the original Tales from the Crypt from the 70s, the Amicus one, with Joan Collins when she's being stalked by the maniac Santa Claus. And then they remade it for the Tales for the Crypt in the 90s or the late 80s by Robert Zemeckis. That's my favorite episode ever. I love those episodes in particular, as much as I love full-length horror films. So I've always wanted to do my spin on the maniac Santa Claus. That's just such a classic archetypal horror trope. To see art now mixed with the maniac Santa Claus is really exciting. Really exciting. I can't wait to dive into that world. Now, as much as I love the trailer, the one thing that I actually enjoy way more that still brings me joy in so many ways is this poster. And like, you all saw it when you saw like the leak from somebody at that movie theater. It doesn't look great. They got like plastic over it. You couldn't really see what you were looking at. But now that I look at it, I can see a lot of detail. And I came up with 10 things that I noticed. Maybe you didn't. And we're going to talk about it. In the top left corner, you can see that Art has written his name, as he always does in every single movie. I think this is his way, much like Freddy Krueger, of letting people know that he is still alive and out there, because I'm pretty sure, much like Freddy Krueger, it's people that believe in him that give him his power. Moving over to number two, you see that the Santa mask he's wearing is actually more than likely Santa's actual face. How did he do it? Doesn't matter. But it very much looks like a mask that like you would see in Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 1 or 2. It looks like a Santa Claus mask from the 80s. It's really cool. Art just went the extra mile. Then of course he has his axe, which is a staple of any horror movie, from Silent Night, Deadly Night, to The Shining, to Misery, at least in the book version. Axes are scary as hell, and anyone who's seen The Shining knows exactly what I'm talking about. Here's Johnny! Over to number four, if you look at the top of the tree, that's clearly an angel meant to represent Sienna. She is the tree topper, she is the angel, of course. Nice little Easter egg, one of my favorites. And then if you go down the tree, you'll notice that there's a couple of heads inside the tree. I believe the one above here with the beard is meant to be Phil Falcone, the producer of Terrifier 1, 2, and 3. I know he was supposed to have a cameo in the Clown Cafe, and there was a little bit of a debate between uh, Damien and the producer whether or not his scenes got cut. This is an image. You be the judge. I don't know who the other head is. It could be literally anybody. And of course, we have more body parts at number six. Hands and feet both are holding ornaments because, again, Art has a wicked sense of humor. Moving now to number seven, this one I really like. Uncle Frank. 
And no, not the guy from Home Alone. Look what you did, you little jerk. And this is probably one of my favorite Easter eggs because, because if it's Sienna and Jonathan's uncle, on which side? I think it would be fascinating if it was on the father's side because the father is such a mystery box and we'd love to get a couple layers pulled back to find out, all right, maybe the brother knows something that we don't. Number eight is Fireplace Body. I have no idea. I think it's pretty clear that it's not the little girl from the trailer. Um, I don't think this is actually, and this goes for both, I don't think the trailer or the teaser poster, I don't think either of them are actually meant to be taken literally. I don't think they're going to be in the movie per se. This is just to give you an idea of what you're in for. Now, if it does pop up, great. But much like Deadpool or the original trailer for Alien, I think this was made just for us to give us an idea of concepts. And you know what? Everybody loves it. I think we're backing it back to a time when people used to actually make posters and trailers that weren't directly tied to the movie. They more or less gave you an idea of what you're in for without actually spoiling anything. And look at the artwork in this. Why don't we do this anymore? Number 9. Did Art the Clown kill Santa? Or is this just concept art? Damien said Santa is a good antithesis for Art, but does that mean that Santa Claus is going to have a main role? Is he going to be killed off in the beginning? Or is he going to be dragged out for the entire movie? It's kind of hard to say. I'm very excited to see how they interpret Santa Claus, and more than that, who they cast for the role. And finally, number 10 is the QR code, which if you scan it, it brings you to a website that keeps you updated on all the updates for Terrifier 3. Check the description down below, I left a link to it right there, or you can just scan the screen right now and see for yourself. I love how interactive this whole thing is. I love the callback to the posters of the 80s. It feels like a poster that you would see for Indiana Jones or Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. They don't make stuff like this anymore. It's usually just like a floating head. But now that horror Christmas movies are here to stay, comment down below. I'd love to get your thoughts. And before we finish up, I want to get your idea on whether or not we should do a video talking about the Twilight Zone episode that Damien Leone was talking about. Now granted, I do love Tales from the Crypt, but I've never seen that episode. Um, but if you want, I will happily cover that episode. Comment down below. Maybe we can find some connections, some inspirations, because I do have the entire box set of Tales from the Crypt. It is only available in DVD 720p, which is unfortunate, and I had to go digging for this, but uh, it's hard to find, but it we could do it. We could do, do it. Just comment down below if that's what you want to see. I am quite curious myself. Maybe that'll be the next video. We also have some other videos in the pipeline uh, that are coming up that are going to be Terrifier related. And of course, we have about, I think, 12 other videos about Terrifier. I'll leave the playlist right here. Be sure to check those out. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been a total blast. I love talking about these movies with you. Be sure to comment down below. Ring that bell. Subscribe, all of that. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I have been John here on Burns Reviews. We'll see you next time. Drop on by the Clown Cafe. Drop on by the Clown Cafe. The grub is downright gruesome, but your appetite's so bang. Cause food's a little funny. Food's a little funny. Food's a 